By 1870, Chicago was home to 300,000 people. The population had tripled every 10 years. The big advantage was its location. Right in the middle of the continent, on the shores of Lake Michigan, roughly where the Great Lakes are closest to the Mississippi River, it's a natural place to put a transportation hub. Even today, O'Hare International is the second biggest passenger hub in the U.S., and Chicago's Union Station is the terminus of one in three Amtrak lines. Union Station is also known for baby carriages in shootouts and Kryptonians killing each other, but that's a different industry. With all the stuff moving between the industrial east and the rapidly expanding west, new industries popped up. The Board of Trade was founded in 1848 to turn crops into commodities, and the Union Stockyards opened in 1865 to turn livestock into dinner. Factories, warehouses, and other industries attracted a huge number of Irish and German immigrants, until Chicago was the second biggest city in the U.S. Then it all burned down. Autumn 1871 was hot and dry. The city was almost entirely made of wood. The sidewalks and many roads were made from wood, the roofs were covered in tar, lumber yards and coal fields lined the river, since July 4th, only an inch of rain had fallen in the city. The fire department had 185 members for a city of 300,000. On the evening of October 8th, a fire started in a barn in what is now the South Loop, and there was really nothing that could be done to stop it. Wind carried the flames north into the densest part of the city. It rained late the next day after the fire had begun to burn itself out. Between 120 and 300 people died that day, which is both a tragedy and a small miracle. You see, 18,000 buildings had burned down in an area of 2,000 acres, from what has since become Chinatown to today's Lincoln Park Zoo, leaving a full third of the city homeless. To lose only 300 lives in the midst of all that is amazing. Today you can see stacks of coins from bank vaults fused together in the heat, and lumps of glass that used to be children's marbles at the Chicago History Museum. Mrs. O'Leary and her cow were initially blamed for starting the fire by a newspaper article that made the story up entirely. The Chicago City Council officially exonerated them in 1997. The Chicago Fire Department's training facility is built on the site of her old barn. Our Major League Soccer team is called the Chicago Fire even though they play in Bridgeview. In October 2014, Red Moon Theater put on the Great Chicago Fire Festival, where they planned to float three full-scale models of 1870s homes onto the river and burn them down as part of a street fair. They failed to light entirely, so clearly the last 140 years of fire safety have been effective. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were donated to the rebuilding effort from around the world, and Chicago started over. It's why we're called the Second City. Instead of people being scared away, the next 30 years saw Chicago as the fastest growing city ever. Wreckage was dragged into the lake to create new land upon which most of our lakefront sits. Rebuilding brought a lot of work to a lot of architects as Chicago became home to the first skyscraper and the first Chicago School of Architecture. Next time, we'll take a look at those guys' greatest collaboration. It's only fair.